So I usually talk about how he was a movie star and, and a director and one of the top fight choreographers ever in demand in Hong Kong. Master Wong was known throughout the Orient as like super kicker, like the best feet on the planet. So Bruce Lee and Master Wong became friends. They didn't speak the same language, so really the only thing, communication they had was, was through uh, martial arts. That was the language they communicated in. He said later on when he was um, established as a movie star and a fighter, part of that, the ritual was if you were good or better than the movie star, you challenge them and if you beat them up, you became a star. So Master Wong was constantly challenged. So he decided to take out an ad in the, in the Hong Kong Times or whatever the local newspaper was saying, I'm tired of this. If you want to come fight me, here's your chance. I, I know Bruce Lee would do the same thing that he would have open challenges and uh, you know, bring on any take. And I remember there's a story that one day he was having an open challenge. Master Wong was in the, the group of people and he said, everybody but you, and he pointed to Master Wong. And it was sort of a, an understanding that, you know, Bruce Lee's doing this for media hype, but he knew Master Wong would pull him apart, basically. Jackie Chan was basically a stuntman at the time that Master Wong was filming with Bruce Lee. And several years later, and I think 1980 and 82 or three, there was two movies where Jackie Chan called to Toronto and called Master Wong out of retirement. He had been in the movies for several years at that point. Master Wong was such a perfectionist. Jackie Chan sort of said, I'll never work with you again in jest. Just saying that he sets a bar so high, it was so difficult. He, they never took the camera off of him. That was his actual speed and, you know, uh, his twisting and everything. And he did that on a constant. Down at Hapkido, he did that. What he did in, the, in that movie, he did that to us every night. And for me, that was one of the impressions that always stuck in my mind that I thought, wow, we don't have a clue of what he really knows and what he's really capable of. And that has always stuck in my mind. Gus actually had a nickname. He was called the Lion of the Danforth. Uh, Gus was known to have replicated Master Wong's kicks better than anybody. They said his, his kicking style was the closest that anybody had ever seen to what Master Wong used to do when he was younger. It started off in the back of the bar, uh, and then it escalated to elite houses uh, in their back backyard. Uh, they had it all fenced off. Um, and these were heavy people betting heavy money. You know, eventually, it wasn't the big guys that uh, used to scare me. It was the skinny Asian guys that they used to send in. I found out after they, they flew in, maybe from Hong Kong or wherever, they flew, uh, flew them in, right? When there's money involved and there's big money involved, uh, anything goes, and there was no rules. Uh, mind you, I was a kid. I, I think I was in, you know, 19, 20 years old at the time. You know, I fought over 30 fights, uh, undefeated. It was literally like a John claude Van Damme movie. Only I did it before he, he made the movie, so I don't know. Maybe he, he did it based on, you know, the people back then. I don't know. That's where the story came out of. So to come around, how would the UFC accept one of our students? I, I think they'd be blown away. I see them most of them getting knocked out. Do we have a student that would be ready for it, to do it right now and, and fight? We've got one guy. You know, over the years, I knew that I wanted to taste that, but I didn't know quite know how to, because I understand where Master Wong is coming from when it comes to people that only take part in competition. I know to train under someone like Master Wong, it's uh, once in a lifetime, you know, it's a very special thing for him to be here in Toronto. Yeah, with their support, it just makes me really, really want to sh showcase the art of Aikido on its biggest platform. To this day, he continues to blow me away. He, he, there's nobody like him. He's really the world's greatest martial artist. I, I, and I can say that with confidence as I've, I've been around the world, I've seen and searched out uh, who the general public thinks are the greatest martial artists. And I don't think there's anybody that can touch a candle to Master Wong.